Joining us now, the Hill columnist, Kristen Tate. Kristen, I want to get your reaction to that report because there is criticism of the electric vehicle industry in this country and the push that this administration is making to go green and use EVs. Not that we shouldn't do that at some point in the future, but that we're just not ready to do it right now. And these safety concerns underscore that point. Right. I mean, electric vehicles, they're an innovative development for consumers, but I don't like the fact that the government is shoving them down our throats. And this is a perfect example of why. This is a brand new technology. The bugs haven't been all worked out yet. And consumers are now realizing that the lithium batteries that power these vehicles are not only extraordinarily expensive, but come with risks as well. My father lives up in New Hampshire. His neighbor had a Prius and the battery of that Prius actually caught on fire and the neighbor's house partially burned down. And he's Mm. fires are very hard to put out. And then, you know, in, in states like California, where these EVs are becoming very popular, we're seeing rolling blackouts as demand for electricity surges and residents are being asked not to charge their vehicles during peak hours. Right. So, you know, I think these software issues, they're not going to help sales, but the real issues are going to be the, ro the rolling blackouts, the electricity prices and these other issues that just make these, these vehicles very expensive and inefficient for consumers. Well, that's a great point, because in California, there was, you know, Know, a huge irony in the fact that Gavin Newsom said, well, you can't, you know, charge your vehicles because the grid can't handle it. I mean, people were saying, but w wait a minute, what are we doing here? Um, having said that, Kristen, you brought up the um, notion that the cost of these vehicles is higher. Actually, um, purchasing an electric vehicle is about $18,000 more than the average new vehicle, fossil fuel vehicle that runs on fossil fuels in this country. Um, at a time when inflation is a 40 year record high, it's tough to find 18 extra thousand dollars in your budget to pony up here. Yeah, exactly. The electric vehicle car batteries alone can be over $10,000. So in some cases, it's just cheaper for consumers to buy, you know, a used gas powered car than just a replacement battery for these EVs. And at the same time, China is really cornering the market for lithium mines. Uh, and we have our own administration trying to basically destroy our domestic gas and oil market, leading to these high gas prices. Uh, so, you know, I, I, it's just really unfortunate. And again, like you mentioned, it's all happening at a time during inflation when consumers are already being pinched with high prices. So, you know, all of this is probably going to uh, just kind of slow down the, the uh, demand for these EVs with consumers. There was an exchange earlier this week between Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib and uh, CEO of J.P. Morgan, Jamie Dimon, um, with respect to the big banks. She was asking him, um, would they divest their new oil and gas um, areas? I listen to this and then react. Does your bank have a policy against funding new oil and gas products, Mr. Dimon? Absolutely not. And that would be the road to hell for America. Your reaction? Well, he's right. I mean, gas prices hit record highs earlier this year as oil has soared due to underinvestment in the sector. This is partially being driven by the ESG movement. But these left wing ideologues like the members of the squad, they are pressuring banks not to invest in oil, gas or coal for political reasons only. They do not care about the devastating impact on American consumers. And it's also notable, Jackie, that President Biden elevated Nina Chen to be the chief climate risk officer at the Office of the Comptroller of Currency. Uh, this is one of the biggest regulators of U.S. banks, and Chen is known to be very sympathetic to the kinds of regulations that the squad is pushing. Mm. But I mean, look at what's going on in Europe right now. We could have millions of people in Europe uh, freezing this winter with frigid temperatures because the entire continent's uh, dangerous lack of energy security, and that's largely the result of caving to pressure from left-wing activists. And then, of course, the, the Russia... Uh, invasion of Ukraine didn't help because the continent has made itself so dependent on Russian oil. But that is the path we are going down here if we listen to these activists like the squad members. Yeah, and I was chuckling at Diamond's reaction because I just love his approach to how he answers questions, right? He just kind of tells you how it is straight up in a very real way. It's not to say these big banks don't have investments in green energy and they're not looking towards the future, but they're basically as smart, reasonable business people saying you can't throw the baby out with the bathwater and you can't do it right now. Um, Kristen, always great to see you. Thanks so much for coming on tonight. Thank you so much, Jackie. We'll talk to you soon. All right, the self-proclaimed